Well, good evening and welcome to another edition of the ASI Hour, our last edition for 2021. Can you believe this year has disappeared already? And uh, we're here in, in December, uh, looking forward to the holidays and, and very grateful that you would take your, your time this evening to join us for, for the ASI Hour. But uh, I assure you, you will not be disappointed this evening. Uh, Dr. Wellard uh, is back. He, he shared with us uh, perhaps a little over a year ago and uh, we're very grateful that he was willing to come and join. One of the most um, re-requested re um, presentations, and I know he'll be sharing something new with us this evening, but um, Dr. Willard, we're very grateful that you would take time. Uh, he just finished his, his daughter's uh, birthday party here this evening and, and was still willing to take time to share with us this evening. So uh, welcome Dr. Willard and welcome to each one wherever you're joining us from this evening. You'll notice in the chat, in the platform that we're sharing from this evening, uh, there's a chat box. If you're on a computer or a larger screen, there's a chat off to the right. Just let us know where you're joining us from. I see we have people joining from uh, West Virginia, New Mexico, India, welcome, uh, Nebraska, um, Minnesota, Maryland, welcome to each one. Just uh, let us know where you're joining us from. And we're just uh, grateful that you're, you're joining us from wherever you are this evening. Uh, Dr. Wellard uh, is going to be sharing a little bit about um, natural ways to reduce stress. And uh, I think it's something that, especially in today's world with everything that's going on, it's a very timely uh, opportunity, Dr. Wellard, for you to share this uh, important topic with us. So we're looking forward to that. Uh, we'd like to just uh, begin our time with prayer. And so I would just ask uh, that you would each uh, join me as we bow our heads in prayer here this evening uh, before we get started. Heavenly Father, uh, we're just so grateful to be able to come to you, our creator, um, one who's created so many amazing things in our world. And in spite of the, the sin and things that we see going on in the world, Lord, it's just amazing to see um, just the, the natural ways that you've created in your, your world the world you've created for us that, that can be used uh, to help us be healthy and to live uh, happy lives. And uh, we look forward, Lord, to the day that we can be in heaven with you. Um, but on this earth, Lord, we, we uh, are just grateful for your continued guidance and protection and for the way that you preserve our lives. As Dr. Wellard shares this evening, we pray that you would help us to be able to learn and to be equipped. And we just uh, pray that you'd bless our time together this evening. In your name we ask this. Amen. Amen. All right, Dr. Weller, the, the time is yours. All right, thank you so much, Curtis. Uh, it's good to be with you all. Uh, I see a lot of people from uh, all different places, and uh, thank you for taking the time to join us tonight. Um, we've got a very uh, important topic, uh, something I think everyone can relate to. Uh, we're going to be talking a lot about stress, the effects of stress, and how to reduce stress. Uh, using the means uh, and the plants that God has given us. So uh, it's going to be exciting. Uh, I think un unless you live on another planet, I think you would uh, it'd be safe to say that you've probably dealing with a certain degree of stress. And so um, we're going to be looking at practical ways that we can, we can reduce, even if it's not major stress, just maybe uh, be able to manage the stress better. So... Uh, tonight, I'll be dealing mostly with uh, what we call adaptogens. So uh, adaptogenic herbs are herbs that help resist the effects of stress. So uh, I've got a few pictures because I, I like to share with you some of the actual plants themselves, what they look like, um, and just give you a little uh, presentation here so you could follow along with me. So I'm just going to um, share my screen with you, and hopefully you can follow me along. So um, as I mentioned before, uh, adaptogens are herbs that help uh, aid the body to re reduce stress. Um, actually, I pr probably should correct that. And uh, Not all of them technically are herbs, um, but um, nearly all of them that I'll be talking about tonight come from the plant kingdom. Uh, there's one exception I I'll be covering, but uh, for the most part, we're going to be talking about the uh, botanicals. So uh, adaptogens are plants that have been found to help our bodies manage stress and maintain balance or homeostasis. Um, so they help us to adapt to external stresses. 
uh, by strengthening our eternal systems, adaptogens can promote vitality, stabilize mood, and improve performance and focus. They can be uh, consumed as supplements, capsules, teas, or, or tinctures. Um, so these are, are powerful agencies that usually work on the neuroendocrine system. And they often work by modulating what we call cortisol, the stress hormone. They can also affect uh, the glucocorticoids, the, the um, chemicals that are released in the body to regulate sugar balance. They can also affect the moods um, and also affect neurotransmission of the brain and different chemicals such as serotonin and dopamine. Uh, they also affect the adrenal glands and they usually give us energy, help us to resist the effects of stress. They give us more endurance, give us better mental clarity. And they, they're sort of like, a, a, I guess, a coach on a football team. That's probably not the, the best illustration, but they're there to sort of support us and encourage us and move us forward uh, without us collapsing at the finish line. So um, that's what they do. And so how do they work? Uh, basically, they help uh, regulate hormones by working on what we call the hypothalamus pituitary axis. So um, this is the master gland system that um, basically connects with all the glandular tissue that help us to uh, regulate the, the hormones that pertain to stress. Uh, they're working on what we call the sympathetic nervous system and so uh, often when we're under stress, uh, we are primed. Our, uh, our sympathetic nervous system is primed and in overdrive. And so uh, there's three different stages of stress. I just want to quickly touch on this. We have what we call the fight or flight response, which is like a sudden emergency. Maybe, um, you know, you're walking in the woods and you see a snake and uh, that's a fight or flight response. So either going to fight that snake or run away. Um, and so that's usually a short amount of time, um, often minutes, um, sometimes hours, and to get us away from the emergent situation or deal with that. And uh, so there's certain physiological effects that take place, uh, affecting our breathing, affecting even our vision, our brain function, uh, give us more sugar in, in the body to help us to run away or to deal with a, a problem. And then... Uh, we have more the what's called the adaptive stage of stress where we get accustomed to it um you know uh years ago i i flew into los los angeles and uh you know you can see the smog from outside but but once you're inside the city you can't see the smog anymore and it's a bit like that with adaptive stress because we actually get accustomed to the stress and it becomes like a familiar friend and we don't even sometimes perceive how stressed that we are. So our body adapts over time and that adaptive stage uh, leads to exhaustion over time. And that's the third stage of stress, which is the exhaustive stage of stress. So in that third stage of stress, uh, that's when things get pretty critical. That's when the adrenal glands really get exhausted. That's when the stress hormones are just creating so many long-term problems and inflammation is setting in and uh, our brain can't cope sometimes um, and our body just collapses and it's uh, it's like taking money out of bank or, or using a credit card and you've maxed it out to its final limit and you've got a few dollars left in the bank and you want to preserve that little that you have and so uh, adaptogens work very well for people in adaptive stage and also exhaustive stage and uh, of course when you're trying to recover from the exhaustive stage you got to be very careful that you don't actually use up those little reserves that you have because uh, often what what happens if people start using adaptogens and then they feel better and they think they are better they think they're recovered and then they go back to using the same amount of energy that they did before and then they actually collapse even worse so it's really important that if you use an adaptogens that you don't take advantage of them and give the body time to recover and uh, one of the best things to recover is is rest and uh, what i mean by that is 
not necessarily physical rest. Sometimes we need physical rest to recover from mental stress. And then if people have had a lot of physical stress, sometimes they just need a break from that. And then they can um, maybe work more on the, on the mind side of things. So uh, whatever that, that cause is, whatever the stressor is, that's what you want to rest from. Um, and so uh, adaptogens won't take your stressors away, <laughs> but they will help your body to be able to regulate better and to be more uh, in, a, in a state of, of being able to meet that, that crisis. All right. So, um, so adaptogens work by um, helping balance hormones. They help uh, lower, as I mentioned before, uh, the cortisol levels. Uh, they can also help with the neurotransmission, the adrenaline, noradrenaline, and uh, they can also fortify the parasympathetic nervous system to offset the overactive sympathetic drive that stress can bring. All right, so the immune neuroendocrine modulators is, is basically what they are. And so some of the benefits to adaptogens is they can help you uh, feel less tired. Uh, they can affect uh, your, your energy levels, which is really good for people that are fatigued. I, I came from, from Maine uh, not so long ago, and a lot of people up there with Lyme's disease. And for those who don't know, Lyme's is very debilitating, and the adrenal glands get really exacerbated. And so uh, people with Lyme's, they, they're very uh, much low in energy. In fact, some, sometimes they can't even get out of bed. It's, it's very, very hard for them. So uh, adaptogens can serve a great, be a great facilitator in recovering people who are uh, convalescing, who uh, maybe um, have gone through a great amount of endurance, maybe even uh, post-traumatic shock or uh, chronic fatigue uh, or nervous exhaustion. They can really help. Now, it's not going to necessarily, um, you know, overnight recover you. Uh, adaptogens take time to work and some are faster acting than others. So uh, we'll go over some of those and I'm going to highlight uh, some of the top adaptogens. Uh, hopefully, if you try these things, uh, hopefully they'll work for you as, as well as they work for other people. Um, now, adaptogens, adaptogenic herbs often grow in places that are very desolate, very dry, uh, very rugged and uh, like deserts, places that are barren. And uh, so, so these uh, conditions that create these adaptogens um, actually provide the, the medicine that we need to go through some wilderness experiences. It's, it's amazing. Um, it says here, though the effects may initially be subtle and take time to be felt, they are real and undeniable. All right, I just want to ask you a question. What is the most powerful adaptogen? All right, this is a good question. The number one adaptogen. All right, we're going to look at that today. It's this man here, Jesus. <laughs> yes, and the Bible says in Isaiah 53 verse 2, for he shall grow up before him, look at this, as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. Now, think about that for a minute. All right. If you put a root in a dry ground, uh, is that plant stressed? I, I would say that, uh, generally speaking, plants that have roots that are in dry ground get pretty stressed. But that stress produces medicine. And you probably heard the saying, uh, whatever doesn't kill us makes us stronger. And so uh, this is true with, with in our lives, you know, with things that we go through. And you may be an adaptogen to someone else. And I often tell people this, that, you know, our suffering is often someone else's medicine, right? So you may go through an experience that uh, was very stressful. It was like dry ground, but as you see 
uh, the fruit of that experience as you see how God has has taught you through that and has brought you through that, then you become an adaptogen for someone else. So, uh, you know, I tell people herbs are like Jesus. They're, they're often the last resort, you know. <laughs> and it takes a little faith and humility to use. Um, but also, like Jesus, herbs are found all around us. They're very accessible. And uh, they take a little bit of faith sometimes to use. And they produce powerful results that sometimes even science can't keep up with. So, so adaptogens are very much like Jesus. So what are they used for? I mentioned before, energy, stamina, adrenal system, and even the thyroid gland. And we'll cover that a little bit more as we go. Uh, also, they're used for as an anti-aging agent. Uh, now, I know we are not at the tree of life yet, um, but uh, I, I would really like to know what's missing from our diet since the fall. But, uh, yeah, herbs uh, carry great amounts of minerals and vitamins and phytochemistry, so that can help us with the aging process. They can stabilize the mood also very good for brain health. So I think we, we could all use that right now. Um, and diabetes, cancer prevention, inflammation. Uh, and so anything that is trying to basically calm the exhausted nerves, help bring about stability to the mind, help regulate the hormones a little better. Adaptogens are phenomenal for that. All right, so let's look at one of the more favorite ones that I love to work with. Um, it's called ashwagandha, uh, which comes from ash means actually horse, and, and ganda means smell. It actually, in the Sanskrit, uh, it uh, denotes that uh, this had the uh, like the smell of a horse, and, and some actually term it the strength of a horse. Uh, anyway, it was very earthly. It is still a, it's a very earthly sort of smell to it. Um, and it's very, very good for modulating the cortisol levels, reducing inflammation, helping with um, the adrenal glands, and not only the adrenal glands, but also thyroid function. And uh, yeah, I've worked with a lot of people who've had thyroid issues, especially uh, hypothyroidism, which is commonly uh, triggered by by autoimmune Hashimoto's. And so in cases like that, often what happens is the adrenal glands get exhausted. And when the adrenal glands get exhausted, uh, and this goes on for, for year after year, what happens is the adrenal glands actually compromise the thyroid gland. And there's, there's about five mechanisms we know of where, whereby the, the exhausted adrenal glands will actually affect the thyroid function. But usually the adrenals go first, and then that affects T3 conversion, that affects the interleukins, these little cell mediators between white blood cells. And it can set up an autoimmune state of affairs. And that means that the body is basically turning on itself and the thyroid tissue is actually being attacked. And so it often starts, the majority of, of, of the root underlying cause of most, not all, but most thyroid conditions are because of the adrenal glands. And underlying that is the stress. And so uh, cortisol is a blessing to the body. It's, it's uh, great for immune function. It helps stabilize the, even the uh, integrity of the cell membranes. But when you have too much for too long, that's that's when problems can set in. So ashwagandha is fantastic uh, for helping fight inflammation, even tumor growth. Uh, it can help also, as I mentioned, curb the cortisol levels. It can help regulate the sugar. It can even help with the killer T cells, which can get rid of the cancer cells. And um, and there was one study showed that the cortisol reduction that was over about a 30-day period reduced the, or should I say the ashwagandha taken over a 30-day period reduced cortisol levels about 30%. Uh, 
um, which which is you know pretty reasonable amount to reduce in just 30 days. Um, you know, it it can sometimes be that extra 20, 30 percent that just takes us over the top. Um, and then it can also reduce anxiety and it can even help with sleep um, and depression. Uh, it's not a herb that's commonly used for depression, but it has great ability to reduce depression because uh, depression is basically a condition whereby your the blood flow is reduced to the frontal lobe, the neurotransmitters are affected, um, the sympathetic nervous system is revved up, insomnia kicks in. In fact, 90% of people with depression have insomnia, so often the two go hand in hand. And so ashwagandha can help with a lot of those uh, symptoms. And it can boost testosterone levels and help with fertility uh, in men. And so this is a good one. We, we're seeing a lot of problems with fertility. Um, in fact, I read some research suggesting that uh, in the next few decades, that due to the sperm count going down, that basically no man will be able to appropriate because the sperm count, sperm motility is so compromised. And there's a lot of reasons behind that. Uh, a lot of the fake estrogens that we have, a lot of the xenoestrogens, the oestrogens, the synthetic uh, estrogen-like mimickers that come into the body can cause problems with, um, with the sperm. And so this can cause fertility issues. So actually, men are having more issues with fertility than women. Now, it used to be the other way around. but So ashwagandha could be uh, one that could be helpful for that. And it can also decrease the cholesterol level, improve memory, performance, attention. There's about 50 different uh, benefits to ashwagandha. But for most part, it's dealing with the neuroendocrine system. Um, and so where it really shines is in helping uh, mitigate the cortisol, strengthening the adrenal glands, helping regulate thyroid function, and sustainable energy. Those are those are things that really it shines. Now, most herbs have what we call a primary function. Uh, so they have a major function, and then they have lots of minor functions. So when you're dealing with someone who has a particular condition, let's just say, for example, thyroid gland problem. So let's say they have hypothyroidism. You want to be specific to get herbs that are um, have a major component of regulating thyroid function. All right, so there's a lot of, as I mentioned before, ashwagandha has about 50 different functions. But um, you want to use a herb that really focuses in on that specific thing you're trying to, to balance. And just keep in mind, you know, there's not one herb that works for 100% of people 100% of the time. Uh, and uh, I, I found in just because I deal with herbs all the time, uh, I've had the privilege to work with thousands of people over the years. And um, I would say just from my experience that in most cases, maybe 80 to 90% of cases, we see improvement. Um, now it doesn't mean the person is completely back to normal, but they have seen some positive direction in their health. So um, often it's just a matter of trying to work out what is the best herb. So you know, me being a herbalist and naturopath, I'm trying to figure out what is the best herb for that particular condition. And if you ascertain the cause, then you're much more likely to be able to help deal with the recovery process. So just remember, herbs are not a, uh, they're not like a magic pill. Uh, they work better with a better lifestyle, because if you have a better lifestyle, then the herbs not going to be constantly trying to clean up and and repair the damage that's being done. So uh, if, you, if you've got a good lifestyle, herbs work uh, much more effectively. Um, there's another herb called holy basil. There's different types of basil. Probably most of you are using sweet basil in your food. But Tulsi is a particular variety of basil that we uh, use as an adaptogenic herb. And it's a phenomenal herb for helping regulate um, stress, and we use it actually in our 
heart formulas to lower hypertension because much of the time hypertension is stress driven and it has properties in the holy basil that help uh, to offset or suppress the chemicals like thrombaxine A2, for example, that causes vasoconstriction. And so this means that holy basil can help dilate the blood vessels and there's less pressure in the arterial networks to elevate blood pressure. Also helps with protecting against toxic chemicals and cancer growth and it's very, very high in antioxidants. In fact, it's one of the highest in antioxidants of all herbs is holy basil. Um, helps lower cholesterol, blood sugar, helps with fibromyalgia, so many other things. So try holy basil. There's uh, another powerful herb called Eleuthera root, also known as Siberian ginseng. And this was used by the Russians. Uh, they were experimenting back in the 1950s uh, to ascertain what herb they could use for the astronauts to resist the effects of stress and to help protect the astronauts from disease and uh, they did lots and lots of studies and they found that Eleuthera root was one of the best herbs for that. So it's very good for controlling blood sugar levels. It's even good for Alzheimer's. Uh, it's very effective to boost the immune uh, system. Um, it's helpful to get rid of toxins out of the body. Um, it's, it's very good to help protect against cancer even helps to increase bone density. That's that's amazing. And it's also a powerful antiviral. So Eleuthera root is, is one of the herbs we actually use in our adrenal formula, along with uh, ashwagandha, some rhodiola, and some licorice. Uh, speaking of which, rhodiola is one of our next ones. And uh, rhodiola actually is often used by athletes, especially those who are doing uh, marathons or endurance uh, sports. Uh, it's very good to help protect the mind from mental stress, actually. And it's got over 140 ingredients in there uh, that have powerful effects upon the nervous system and endocrine system. And it's got uh, high levels of antioxidants. It helps with diabetes and it can help stimulate serotonin, that wonderful hormone that gives us peace. You know, when Jesus stood up on the boat and said, peace, be still, uh, we had a, sh that, well, the disciples had a shot of serotonin right there. Uh, this is a peace hormone. And when you have a lot of stress, serotonin levels often get suppressed. So rhodiola can help elevate those. Um, it can also regulate dopamine activity and it can help with people such as bipolar, um, it can help balance cortisol levels, and it can also give you more endurance, more stamina as well. So rhodiola is, is good. It, it doesn't always work straight away. You may need to take it for a few weeks. Uh, same with ashwagandha. Um, there's another herb I'll talk about that is quick. It's very quick energy, and I'll, I'll share with you some of the pros and cons to using that. But rhodiola um, is a pretty safe herb to take. Um, there's not a lot of contraindications with rhodiola, uh, but you may want just want to check things out online just to see if there's any, uh, you know, herb drug interaction if you if you're taking things. I certainly wouldn't take rhodiola with caffeine. In fact, I don't recommend caffeine at all. Um, but uh, yeah, you you don't want to take sports energy formulas that have anything caffeine uh, along with rhodiola. All right, so that's an excellent one to take. Um, shishanda berries, shishanda berries uh, are phenomenal uh, berries and they're one of the best things that you can use to detox the body as well. And shishanda berries are often used to help with liver function. In fact, they they have a chemical called superoxide dismutase that's an enzyme, it's also an antioxidant, and it helps protect the body against these oxygen ravish, ravishing molecules in the body, such as free radicals, and they can help protect the body against the damaging effects of those, those molecules. So uh, shishandra is very protective on the body. Um, it is a true adaptogenic herb, so it protects us against effects of stress and it regulates, helps regulate the cortisol 
uh, it can also help with sleep and, 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 and tiredness and lowers cholesterol. It helps with diarrhea, dysentery, uh, erectile dysfunction, physical exhaustion, excessive urination, depression, irritability, irritability and memory loss. Um, yeah, along with a lot of other, even improving the vision. Well, that doesn't surprise me because it's uh, very high in uh, vitamins. And uh, one of the one of the top vitamins you take for eye function is vitamin A. And it's got vitamin A in there. It's also got vitamin C in there. Uh, in fact, shishanda berry is very high in vitamin C. By the way, uh, most vitamin C you get from the store is going to be from GMO corn. So I don't recommend that. Um, be careful where you source your vitamins from. I'm a big believer in getting your vitamins directly from the food that you eat. And herbs actually come under the category of nutrition. They're like superfoods and they're high in vitamins, they're high in minerals, high in phytochemistry. So um, there's certain herbs that we call nutritive herbs. And these are herbs that we take for nutritional value. Uh, you can take ongoing. And some people take things like alfalfa or barley grass or um, nettle, um, oat straw, different herbs to, to take just for nutritional value. Uh, so shishanda is one of those if you just want to take, you only need a few actually. Um, they are a little bitter. They're not the, the most tastiest herb, um, but extremely powerful. I mean, just a tablespoon a day would suffice. Um, if you, you can make a tea out of them, we put shishanda berries with goji berries. And then uh, we also put some red clover in some oat straw, uh, peppermint, and licorice root. It makes a phenomenal tea. So um, some uh, we have some recipes on our website uh, for those interested. If you want to make some teas, we have we have some tea recipes on our on our website. Uh, we call that the anti-aging tea, but it's very good for stress. So um, tea is is wonderful. You know I. I just love teas. Um, I grew up on tea. I, too, I grew up on the wrong type of tea, unfortunately. <laughs> it was one of those caffeinated Lipton teas, but uh, I have learned to appreciate uh, the herbal side of things. In fact, just working with herbs, if you want to help you stress, I mean, I get stressed sometimes and just working with the herbs, smelling them, handling them, seeing them, trying them, it just it just takes away all that stress. Like the plant says, just don't hang on to that stress. Give it to me. And it's just like, like Jesus. It just, it's just a, a great way to take your mind off the things that are going around. And I think one of the problems that we have in humanity right now is that we're so disconnected from the earth, you know. Um, and I know a lot of new ages have taken this the wrong way and taken us into mysticism and ana anarism and <laughs> and what they call it now uh anyway where you worship nature um but uh there is a there is a a truth some some truth that is in the midst of that that draws people right and god has given us nature to draw us back to him not to draw us to just the things themselves or uh, esoteric concepts but as we work with nature as we put our hands in the soil um, we we start to lose that stress there's a lot of even uh, the the body has an electrical charge and you know we're dealing with computers we're dealing with cell phones we're dealing with all these radiation devices and uh, one of the things that can help with that is just putting your hands in the soil just uh, taking taking your socks off and, and putting your feet in in the earth just there's there's chemicals in the soil that actually give us immune enhancing benefits um, and working with flowers working with nature if you've got a little bit of soil in your backyard that you can spare um, put a few herbs in there and have a 10 by 10 foot square garden you could grow about a hundred different herbs in there that could it could give you plenty of medicinal value through the whole year so um we're seeing uh, and i just share this with you because uh, this is something that is a great concern to me right now uh the supply chains are breaking down here and there and it's getting harder i'm i'm paying 
twice what I used to uh, 18 months ago before COVID for the herbs that I'm buying right now. Um, and they're getting longer to ship to me, uh, harder to source. Some herbs like uh, very rare to find even online anymore. And so, uh, you know, one of the things that we can do to to protect against that is grow some of our own and uh, also uh, get um, familiar with the herbs that grow locally, even in the wild. There's, there's so many. When I was in Maine, uh, I worked at a, a medical clinic and it was in the town of Bath and just within a couple of blocks of where I worked, there was about a hundred different herbs. You just walk by on the side of the road and um, yeah, you would just ignore them unless you knew what they were good for. So um, these are times I think that um, we need to start looking at, at these things more closely and appreciating their value. Uh, turmeric is another excellent herb. We don't often look at this as an adaptogen, but it truly is an adaptogen. And it's got thousands of different benefits. Most people focus on the curcumin, but you know, you can take curcumin out of turmeric and it's still anti-inflammatory. It has powerful benefits. There's been over 6,000 studies done just on turmeric alone. So it's a powerful herb. It's uh, one of the most powerful anti-inflammatory herbs. And of course, stress leads to inflammation. In fact, there's a common denominator with all chronic diseases. And the common denominator is they're all inflammatory. Even depression is inflammatory. So uh, turmeric can really help with that. It can also help with the neuroendocrine system. It can help with um, even protecting the body against tumor growth or cancer growth. Uh, it uh, is very good in, in helping protect the body against oxidative stress. Uh, it's very good for vascular health. Um, basically, it's good for everything. <laughs> it's amazing how much turmeric will do. And one of the best cancers that turmeric has been demonstrated to be uh, helpful for is um, bowel cancer. Bowel cancer. So just keep that in mind. It's uh, very good also for anxiety, uh, even muscle soreness. So it's a, it's a good one to have, have on hand. I, I must say, just going back to, to turmeric, that um, a lot of people aren't getting really good quality turmeric. And so there's the stuff that you often get at the store, it's often aged. It's not very powerful. Over 99% of turmeric has reasonable amounts of lead in there. And so uh, we recommend the either um, doing the tea or having an extract because uh, the, the lead gets trapped in the fiber, the tissue, uh, fibrous tissue. And, and if you make a tea or an extract, it, you don't get the lead out of there. And also powder requires hydrochloric acid for extraction. So um, if you take a tea or an, or an extract, it goes straight in the bloodstream, doesn't need any digestion. So turmeric is phenomenal. We, uh, I don't know what we'd do with turmeric. It's just so, so powerful. Um, licorice root is another one. If you've got any peptic ulcers, stress ulcers, then licorice can provide a protective effect on the stomach. It's got mucolaginous substances in there that help protect the body. Uh, it's very good for the GI tract. Um, it's also very good for viruses. It's antiviral but it's also good for stress. It helps with cortisol. It's actually uh, got pretty much every different category of, of herb in there. So it's a, it's a demulcent, it's aromatic, it's bitter, it's sweet, it's an adaptogen. Um, you know, it's uh, even aphrodisiac. <laughs> it, it's, it's got all different complements of different categories of herbs in one. So um, it's a powerful herb to use. And yes, you got to be careful if you are hypertensive. Um, we had a case where a lady was taking three cups of licorice tea, her blood pressure shot up 40 points after that. So, um, be careful if you're hypertensive, you want to avoid licorice because it's high in sodium and, uh, that flushes out potassium and that causes more fluid retention and it elevates uh, blood pressure. Panax ginseng. This is another favorite one of mine. Uh, now, 
this is the only true ginseng, Panax ginseng. And before I mentioned Siberian ginseng or Luther, it's not true a true ginseng. Uh, Panax is. And you've got two different kinds. You've got the Chinese kind, which is also known as Korean. Uh, it's got about 20 different names to it. But uh, you've got the Chinese and you've got the American one. Uh, and I went through a walk uh, over here in Kentucky and, and we saw four different uh, ginseng plants just growing wild out in nature so that was really exciting to see but ginseng is very expensive um you can pay ten thousand dollars for a pound of ginseng it's it's really really expensive um but um it's very very powerful too and it works very quickly so if you've got um, a situation where you're tr really really exhausted you can hardly function um, ginseng can pick you up pretty quickly it works within a few hours now there is some some concern about using ginseng because uh you don't want to use it definitely don't use it with caffeine and you don't want to use too much i've had two cases where people have been they either took too much one lady took too much uh she was going really well <laughs> she thought a little was good therefore a lot was better and uh, she ended up with some uh tachycardia uh nothing dramatically serious long-term side effects or anything but it can cause the heart to race so if you're on a pacemaker or if you've got some tachycardia you want to be careful using ginseng um, it does help regulate sugar levels too so it's, it's great for diabetics in fact in in germany it's one of the leading herbs in in china it's one of the it's called the king of herbs um, and it's used for vitality it's used for um, helping increase the the uh, longevity uh, it's helpful for mental concentration uh, but where it shines the most is giving you energy so and i remember uh, one time we went around the world i had a buddy pass it was four days going from the philippines back to america getting knocked off planes and having to stay in airports and i was completely exhausted when i got back and took some ginseng and it it felt like 20 years younger <laughs> after that it was amazing i it, i didn't feel the effect so much when i'm like feeling okay but when you're really feeling down uh really depressed low in energy ginseng can really uh pick you up so it's a really good one to to use uh, you just don't want to use it long term and what i mean by that is more than like six weeks at a time straight and just give you a, a little principle of working with herbs um, just take a day off a week because it will help resensitize your body to the herb. So you've probably taken a medication at some point and after a while it loses its effect or maybe you've taken a herb and it's lost its effect. Well, if you have a break like one day off a week, then your body will not lose the the mechanism, mechanism of action. So uh, that will help you to keep the results going. Um, Shadavari is another one. It's... Uh, not so commonly known but it's great for regulating hormones for ladies uh the menstrual cycle um it's actually even the name itself it denotes that it's like the elixir of a hundred different diseases so um it's very good for fertility um female fertility it helps with the immune system it helps add as a tonic it's a sedative tonic to calm the nervous system and it soothes anger and irritability, helps with inflammation, um, and so much more. So uh, we actually made a formula. We had a lactation consultant came in one time and w wanted to have a formula that was to help with milk production. And Shadavari was one of those uh, herbs that we used. Had great results too. Um, and maca root is actually a cruciferous vegetable, uh, maca root. So... Uh, notice pretty much all of these I'm sharing with you are actually roots. I said we've got some berries here. So maca root is very good for helping with the adrenal function. It, it's very good to give you drive and get up and go. It helps with libido, helps even with prostate function. Um, it's very nourishing and supportive to the body's hormonal system. So that's an excellent one to take. And I'm just looking at the time here. It's running out. So <laughs> I'll just finish on this one, goji berries. Uh, these, these actually, you could put these with, um, like oatmeal in the morning. You want to add some 
like raisins and antelope color with goji berries. They're very high in vitamin C, and vitamin C is a powerful antioxidant. Um, I think the only thing that beats vitamin C with uh, content uh, that, for, that, that beats goji berry is uh, what we call camu. Camu, camu. Um, it's a tropical fruit from the Amazon jungle. And uh, one teaspoon is like eating a whole pound of oranges in vitamin C content. So uh, goji berries are like half the vitamin C of camu, and it's twice that of rose hips. So uh, it's like taking one of those is like taking a vitamin C tablet. Um, and vitamin C is very, very important for the tissue, the integrity of the tissue, um, protect the body against free radical damage. It's very, very helpful to uh, improve um circuitry system even even vision uh liver function uh, so many so many things it can help with so sorry i've run out of time here um so i've been told to leave 15 minutes for some q a so let me go back here uh there we go all right so i'll pass it back to you okay Kirk. All right, and you, hopefully we can... I see lots of questions coming uh, through here, and so I'll start uh, kind of yeah. at the top. Um, I would like to know some good plant-based resources of vitamin D. Which vitamin? Vitamin D. D. Vitamin D. Yes. Now you can I, I know this is particularly hard for vegans, so there is um, some vitamin. D capsules you can get that come from the plant source lichen. All right. So uh, I, I'm not going to say which brand. You can go online and you can source that out for you. But lichen is a very good source um, of vitamin D. And that's D3. So uh, D3 is better absorption than D2. And, um, you know, I mean, if, if you're going to use a supplement of D3, uh, that would probably be the best source to get. Okay, so lichen would be a great source. Uh, Sarah, hope you're uh, able to catch that. Thanks for asking the question. Uh, the next yeah. question, talking about inflammatory things, how is fungus related with inflammation and how do you get rid of them? Wow. Well, not all fungus is created equal, but... <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yes, uh, I mean, we're dealing with a lot of people with the mold, right? And mm -hmm. so um, it's tough. You've got to build up your body's immune immune system, right? So, um, so if you've got, let's just say you've got candida, right? Mm -hmm. um, then, you know, you, you need to make sure that your body is equipped. Now, 70% of the immunity comes from your gut right your intestinal flora so a lot of people who've had uh, antibiotics for example they they get a problem with uh getting fungal infection in fact 90 percent of diabetics have candida and it's hmm. because they have suppressed immunity and they have circulation problems those are the two primary causes so when people have fungal problems usually i'm thinking 99 percent of the time they've got problems with their immune system their, their immunity is run down so then I look at things that can boost that, like astragalus root, uh, sometimes echinacea, perhaps even golden seal, uh, depending on, on what they've gone through and how serious it is. Uh, I haven't talked about doses as a reason for that because there's too many variables that go into that. Mm. But, um, yeah, you, 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 dose, you, 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 you um, rate your dosage on your weight most supplements are based on 150 pound person and then you've got sensitivity to the herb you've also got the con condition you have to take into effect and also the severity mm -hmm. of the condition All right so um those are things you have to that, that vary with the dosage um but yeah immunity is is the big thing and sometimes you have to use something that's pretty strong as an antifungal uh so garlic would be an excellent one to use mm -hmm. Uh, if it's a topical fungus, I like to use uh, calendula. Calendula is very good for, for fungal infections. Um, and sometimes it's dietary related. Sometimes there's gluten issues and mm -hmm. 
sugar issues and all kinds of other things. So, yeah, sorry, I haven't got time to go into it. <laughs> yeah, pretty with that <laughs> I'm one. sure. I'm sure the hour, uh, two hours would not, not even come <laughs> close here, but uh, I see lots more questions coming in. Um, what benefits does Lotus Plumo have? Uh, okay, who's, who's given that question? This is George uh, is asking this, so I'm not sure uh, I'm familiar with that, but. Yeah, well, it's, it's good inflammation. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's not one that I commonly use, so. Um, but you know, it, it could, it could help, uh, with the circuitry system. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. So it, it's, it's not very common. Herbalists don't often use that, but okay. I'm not sure maybe that they're, they're using it for a particular condition. I'm not, I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, may I ask what herb is good for IBS? IBS? Oh yeah. Um, you could use, um, turmeric. Turmeric is really good for IBS. You want to use, uh, carmative herbs, right? Um, now adaptogens can also help with IBS, uh, and mucolaginous herbs, right? Cause you've got inflammation going on, irritable bowel syndrome. So, uh, you want to use herbs that are high in mucus, mucolaginous properties. So this is like jelly and that jelly helps to coat the inside of the GI and that helps to protect against irritants and, uh, inflammation and uh also with irritable bowel, irritable bowel you're going to have constipation or you're going to have a problem with uh loose bowels so uh, psyllium seed is very good for that as well as a powder it's good for both diarrhea and uh constipation okay <clears throat> i have psoriasis on my fingers i'm a vegan and have done many cleanses what can i do to get rid of this or rid psoriasis. my body of this on the fingers okay vegan you've done many things okay so it, there's so many causes let me explain there's not just one cause uh there's usually a convergence of multiple factors bearing down so uh -huh. like stress could be 20 percent. i'm just saying hypothetically not, uh -huh. not a specific person uh -huh. but uh you know diet could be 30 percent you know uh, uh you know there could be heavy metals or you know, mm -hmm. gluten intolerance, whatever. So, uh, with psoriasis, usually, usually it's either stress driven or there's something in the diet, right? Um, or so having some allergic reaction. Um, now sometimes that can be triggered through certain medication as well. Mm -hmm. Um, but for the most part, it's stress induced. I'd say even more than diet, uh, psoriasis. Uh, you, you, you often come across people that have psoriasis and it flares up when they're having stress and then it subsides and it comes back again and they have more stress. So, uh, I'm not saying this always happens, but it, it, it's very common to be seen with psoriasis. So adaptogens could help in that situation. Um, and just, you know, doing a thorough evaluation in, 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 in the foods that we also eat as well. Um, there's too many for me to list to get, to get through, but yeah, I, I'm happy if you want to shoot me an email and give me more information, that, that, that'd be fine. Okay. Well, we may, uh, may want to share that at the end of the presentation here so that, um, yeah. you can have the opportunity to maybe ask, uh, a few more questions for sure. Yeah. I hear yeah. you warn us about lead found in turmeric. Does this include yeah. turmeric powder? Yes. Yeah. Yes, it does. Uh, it's not that they spray lead on turmeric. I, I, I don't mm -hmm. want anyone thinking it goes through some spraying process, but it's taken up by the soil. So uh, turmeric mm -hmm. has a high affinity for taking lead out of the soil. Uh, depends where it's grown to, and even organic turmeric has usually uh, reasonable levels of lead in there. So, um, yeah, so powder is 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 more problematic if you're going to be taking it for long term um now there's a, there's a payoff here you know because you have to think well is the benefit outweigh the negatives so i tell people if you want to take turmeric long term go for the extracts and that you won't get the lead in there all right but if it's just a matter of taking a teaspoon now and again it's it's not going to be a problem it's not going to kill you it's just it builds up it accumulates in the fatty tissue of the body and it can also 
accumulate in the brain as well. So, okay. okay. Um, do you do any herbs help restore the myelin uh, for people with multiple sclerosis? Multiple sclerosis, yeah, the myelin sheath. Um, well, it depends on the cause, right? So um, sometimes it's lack of vitamin D, right? We had a lady came to the lifestyle center when I worked at Wildwood and, and she was keeping every law of health, except she was writing a book and she was inside a lot, <laughs> getting no vitamin D, vitamin D levels bottomed out. So as soon as they came back, she was fine. Other people, it's stress. Other people, we've, uh, we had a, a young lady in the lifestyle center. She was eating junk food. And uh, oh. when she got rid of that, it, it, it sorted itself out. Um, so it depends on the cause, but um, there are some things that could help if it's stress induced, I would use the adaptogens, all right? Um, if, you know, it, there's no miracle curve that's gonna patch mm -hmm. those nerves completely up, but uh, you could also use some lecithin um, and omega-3 fatty acids um, and then adaptogens and also turmeric because uh, you know after a while you you've got inflammation that builds up and inflammation can take out the sheath as well so turmeric uh -huh. yeah another excellent one to use okay what can i take for poor circulation in my leg poor circulation yeah you want uh circulatory herbs uh things that help improve um either the heart muscle such as hawthorn berry uh, so hawthorn berry, it causes a greater contraction of the heart muscle. Left myocardial contraction is increased, and that increases the ejection fraction, and that increases the amount of pressure that goes through the uh, the uh, extremities and the capillary beds. So hawthorn berry is an excellent one for that. Uh, ginkgo is another good one for circulation. So also is cayenne pepper and ginger. Those are probably the top four I'd recommend. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily take cayenne all the time. Uh, ginger would be a better substitute. Um, but uh, if you've got heart problems, hawthorn berry would be the herb of choice. Very yeah. good. All right. Uh, I know you said uh, you were avoiding this, so I'll, I'll uh, oh. ask the question and you can decide what to do with it. Can you discuss okay. portion sizes and frequency for using adaptogens? Okay. <laughs> Yeah, this is the problem is it's not a cookie cutter thing. Um, you know, this is this is why I come in <laughs> because people ask me all the time. Um, you know, there's no one that can prescribe a herb in the whole country. No doctor, no pharmacist, no botanist, no herbalist, no one. So what we do is we say, if it were me, <laughs> I would do this. So uh, again, it depends. I'd have to have more information to be more specific, but. Um, you know, with our extracts that we make, we have an adrenal formula. Um, you know, usually it's between one to three servings. The majority is usually two. And that's uh, usually about half a teaspoon is in a dropper form. It's it's two half droppers. Um, so that's a good starting point for most people. But it depends on the condition, the severity and a few other things. So. That's as about as specific <laughs> as I can be, I'm sorry. All right, I appreciate uh, you sharing just that little bit of guidance there. And uh, I think the big takeaway is um, it would be best to probably consult with, with someone who has experience in this um, yeah. to yeah. get the proper advice on that. All right, um, yeah. probably last question here uh, with our, yeah. our time is up here. Uh, is there any herb uh, better uh, or that helps hyperparathyroid? Hyperthyroid or parathyroid? Uh, Hyperparathyroid. Hi, Hyperparathyroid. So yeah, you're gonna you're gonna end up with a problem with calcium regulation. So, um, yeah, yeah, there there are, um, but uh, yeah, it it would I, I would need more information. But uh, you, you know, you're gonna either use when when you, when you have problems with the parathyroid, you're gonna have problems with regulating bone density, uh, calcium is going to be, can be a problem. So, um, if people need more calcium, then I'd recommend, um, uh, you know, from other than a dietary source, sometimes we recommend, uh, certain botanicals to help, 
uh, compensate for that, such as oat straw, right? Um, so oat straw is, is very good for bone health. Um, it's a very good source of phosphorus and calcium. Um, now, you know, there may be some inflammation going on, so it may recommend, may recommend some turmeric root as well. Um, you can also, I learned this little trick, rub cayenne pepper, well, actually the oil, infuse cayenne oil and rub it in the, in the thyroid, right? And that can, uh, that can help uh, regulate better thyroid control. Um, yeah, so yeah, the parathyroid is a little bit difficult. If there's, if, if there's a problem like uh, you've got a tumor growing on there or a nodule, then usually what you have is either exacerbation of the hormone or you don't have enough. So I'm not sure what, which one sh that person has. So it's, it's hard to know, but, um, if, if it's growing abnormally and it's, it's getting out of control, uh, then I would, I would look at a doctor to <laughs> surgically take care of that. But, uh, if, if it's not going to be a problem, it's just benign and it's, it's, you know, it's just, more of a uh, problem regulating calcium, uh, you know, then I, I would use some of those herbs I mentioned. Okay. Very good. Well, uh, our time is up uh, for the ASI hour. Uh, Dr. Willard, we've had a few people ask, uh, is there a way to get a hold of you uh, to maybe ask more questions? What would be the yeah. best way? Yeah, um, we have a uh, website, uh, AmericanHerbShop.com. Uh, okay. well, shop is S H O P P E. Um, just to let you know, um, American herb shop. Uh, I don't know if someone could write that, write that. Yeah, up we've there. got it in the chat here um, a couple times. And, and I, I can be, I, I do, um, just don't or call me at once, but I'll give you my phone number. It's 828-545-6049. Um, and, uh, if I, if you can't get me, I'll call you back and, uh, be happy to help you. My, my role is to really educate. You know, I, if people can swallow some education, we can avoid a lot of medication. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm just sort of steering people in the right direction. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, most doctors don't know a lot about herbs other than contraindications. So, so it's very hard for people to get this type of information um, because most doctors aren't dealing with the botanicals in a therapeutic mm -hmm. form that you're usually telling people not to take it with the lysinopril right. or yeah. diabetic medication. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, again, we appreciate what you've shared with us this evening, Dr. Wellard. I, I can just tell from the comments here, we have a lot of people who are just, uh, uh, been blessed by what you've shared this evening. And so thank you for that. And we look forward to having you back again sometime to share with yeah. us on you. Uh, Dr. Wellard shared with me a number of different topics that he has shared on in the past. So we look forward to having you back again to share with us soon. So with, with that, um, just for anybody that may be want, wanting to review this again, it will be on the ASI Hour website. Um, the, the presentation that Dr. Wellard has shared uh, in the next few days, it'll be posted there. If you just Google ASI hour, uh, you'll see it listed there. And so with that, Dr. Wellard, I'd like to ask if you'd be willing to close us with prayer. Sure. sure. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we're so thankful for these simple remedies that you've given us. And we're thankful that, uh, Lord, you're the healer. It's, it's, I tell people, it's, it's not the herb that heals you. God is the one that heals you, but we're thankful that you've placed these plants in in the way of our recovery process and we just want to thank you that um they're so representative of of you as as a creator as as one that came as a root out of dry ground the one that humbled himself and, and one that uh, became the medicine of all humanity and father we just pray that for each one that listening that you will specifically direct them we're told that we we pray for a miracle and you direct us to natural remedies and you also said that when nature's remedies are used according to your will it produces supernatural results so lord we thank you for that and we pray that you will bless each one and give us peace of mind peace of heart and uh, strength of of uh, physical frame as well that we can enjoy what's coming and
and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, thank you again, Dr. Wellard, and for each one of you who have taken the time to join us this evening. Uh, wish you a wonderful Christmas, and we look forward to seeing you again here on ASI Hour. Uh, next month, we'll be uh, looking forward to another edition of the ASI Hour on uh, January uh, 20, and so we'll uh, be communicating uh, about that. And so, again, uh, good evening to all, and thank you for taking the time to join us. Thank you. God bless you all.